All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, today we are presenting about building location-aware applications for various use cases. So we are going to demonstrate how some location-based solutions uh, with or without maps are developed in various different types of applications. So we're going to use some different technologies and um, mapping SDKs and that kind of thing. So. All right, so I'm going to start by introducing myself, and then I'll let Russell introduce himself. Uh, so my name is Courtney Yato, and I'm a developer advocate here at Esri. I've been with Esri for um, about a year and a half now. And before jumping into this GIS web development world, uh, I actually taught high school math and computer science, and I did that for 10 years. Uh, and yeah, I'm. My love and passion of teaching kind of translated well into my role now. I like helping developers understand how to use like our ArcGIS JavaScript technologies. I do fo focus mostly on like our REST APIs and then our open source integrations. Um, so yeah, and you can find me on all of these different social media platforms. And Russell. Yeah, and I'm Russell Sands. I'm a solution engineer at Esri. I'm on a team that we call the Location Services and Analytics team, uh, which is kind of a little bit silly because it sort of means a bit of everything that Esri does. Uh, really what we're focused on are two core things. One is sort of an analytics practice focused on some of the emerging analytics solutions that Esri offers. Uh, but more salient to why I'm here in this session, we also work a lot with developers, especially web developers, who are looking to use our platform location services inside of commercial applications that they're building. And that could be everything from uh, smaller startups who are building mobile applications to large technology companies who are building deeply integrated solutions with ArcGIS. Uh, I've been with Esri for about eight years, and I think this is a session I'm really looking forward to because it's kind of fun. We get to sort of show you how some of these location services can be used in a wide variety of ways. Yeah, it's like a grab bag of things. Yeah. So it should be fun. And this is the first time I'm presenting with Russell, so I'm excited. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and go over the agenda, what we're uh, going to cover today. So we're going to chat, start with, or we're going to start by chatting about the ArcGIS platform and what it's all about. Um, and we'll tell you how like, the plat ArcGIS platform can actually enrich your applications. Uh, then, when, before each demo, we're going to do this kind of pattern of talking about some location services that are going to be used within the demo that we're going to show. We'll also talk a little bit about the tech stack that we'll use, because we're going to be using like the JavaScript SDK, but we'll also be using some open source stuff and other things. Um, yeah, and then after our demos, we will wrap up with some like, just key takeaways. Uh, and then we'll have a Q&A. So we'll get started. Awesome. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about the ArcGIS platform location services that we're going to see a lot of over the next hour. I won't belabor too much of this, because I think for those of us who are at the plenary today, we get a really deep sort of overview about what these ArcGIS platform services are. But just as a reminder, the ArcGIS system is the complete offering from Esri. It includes software like ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise, ArcGIS Pro, um, and it's built on top of a set of location and content-based services. ArcGIS Platform is a platform as a service way of accessing those same fundamental location services that ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Pro, and ArcGIS Enterprise are interacting with. So that means you get access to base maps, geocoding, routing, all these things you're familiar with. Uh, but one of the things that is really powerful about this is since you're really working with those fundamental location services, there's a lot of ease to support open source mapping libraries. So if you're building with MapLibre, Leaflet, open layers, you can consume these services directly there. And we'll sort of share some of this as we go, but all of this is well documented on the developer side. Uh, the other thing that the platform as a service model allows us to support are API keys for authentication. Of course, we can do OAuth-based authentication as well. But if you're building, say, a service inside of another system that just needs to geocode some records, sometimes it's just easier to use an API key, geocode everything there, and move on. And as a developer, these location services are supported by the APIs and SDKs that you're probably already using if you're working with ArcGIS Online, Enterprise, or Pro. 
So that means that you can use the platform location services within a Python notebook using the ArcGIS API for Python. You can develop uh, native or mobile applications. Uh, you can use them within the JavaScript SDK, and again, a variety of open source libraries. So one of the really nice things about the high performance services and the sophisticated analyses here is, as a developer, if you've been working with ArcGIS for a long time, those REST APIs and the SDKs work the same way. It's just a different way of engaging with them. And the key sort of differences here, you know, while we still have this sort of same developer experience with the rich documentation, those core location services, one of the key differences with the platform location services is that they offer a consumption-based model when you interact with them. So that means if you're gonna build an application, you don't need to estimate upfront how much routing you're gonna do or how many uh, geocodes you're gonna do. You can consume exactly what you need and pay for only what you use. So you don't have to, when you're working with the platform location services, you're not thinking about credits and trying to purchase enough in advance. You should pay for exactly what, are you, what you use as you go. There's probably nothing too revolutionary to this audience uh, on this slide here, because this is just sort of a reiteration, right, that the location services available to you through the Arches platform include everything you're familiar with working with and some things that are newer. So that means that ArcGIS platform includes base maps, data hosting, and data visualization capabilities. So for applications where you need to host some data, stylize that, and display it on a map, whether that's with our SDK or another one, the ArcGIS platform provides you that ability and the content and services you need to do that. When you need to geocode or route to a location, which we'll see some examples of in just a moment here, those services are also offered through ArcGIS platform. And then when you need to provide additional context, we have things like the geo-enrichment service that Esri has offered for a long time to access demographics data, market potential information, if you wanna know how many households in an area have two or more cats, you, you can answer that question. If you wanna know how many people played um, beach volleyball at a bar in the last six months, you can answer that question. Um, but also we have point of interest data, and this is coming from the places service, uh, which you saw this morning. And this provides more context that you can begin to layer into your application. So the locations of point of interest, as well as additional data about them, operating hours, ratings, reviews, price ratings, Things where if you were trying to layer on just a little bit more into your map that would help someone understand where they're looking at and what they're looking at, the Places API provides that. And of course, you can access different data layers and run spatial analytics as you would expect in an ArcGIS application. And like, we were, like Courtney was saying as we were sort of introducing ourselves, we're gonna sort of go through each of these location services, or I should say many of these services and we're gonna kind of go through them one by one, and as we go, we're gonna show examples of, examples of different applications that are using these. So the first one, oh, I, I should say, again, that these are available for all kinds of different frameworks you might be developing in. And you'll see web and mobile applications demonstrated today. The first service we're gonna talk about is probably one of the more familiar ones. It's definitely on the greatest hits list, um, and that would be the geocoding service. Um, the geocoding service uh, that Esri offers is a really powerful uh, way of realizing a geocoding service. We source it from many authoritative sources of information, everything from commercial data providers to the community of users. Um, we're really incorporating a wide variety of information into the underlying source of truth that this service is built on top of. Um, it supports local languages and local address formats so that your users don't have to think about in their head how should they enter their address. They enter it the way they expect to in the country or the region that they live in. Um, and the geocoding service also has the ability to look up points of interest. It's a little bit of a different twist on it from what the places service offers. But if you need to find a location so that you can route to it, the geocoding service makes that easy as well. This is global coverage. And another thing that's really powerful is that in addition to sort of traditional geocoding where you send us an address and we send you back a location or you send a coordinate and we tell you it's 380 New York Street in Redlands, the geocoding service can also provide address suggestions. So if you need to just get sort of type ahead suggestions, 
it can be a really powerful way of collecting clean data because you get a type ahead suggestion, the user says, yes, that is my address. And we give you back a key that you can use to look up exactly what that suggestion matched to. And with that in mind, we're gonna show our first demonstration here. Um, this one's gonna be a pretty fundamental one where we're gonna show a geo-enabled form that will capture a sort of accurate address for the user's input. So I will exit PowerPoint gracefully and come into Chrome here. Um, so this is my sort of like state, uh, initial state here where I have a basic form. This is built using Calcite Web Components. I can enter my name. Um, I can enter my email address, which is not a secret because you know how to find me from that first slide. <laughs> um, and if I want to, I can provide an address. But the way this is working right now, if I start typing something in, I just can sort of freehand type here. So I could have typos, right? I can make mistakes. I do have some suggestions for the state that someone lives in, but it's not a particularly smart form. I did mention that it's built with Calcite though. So before we sort of move on, I just wanna talk a little bit about that. Uh, Calcite is a collection of design and development resources that you can take advantage of in the applications you're building to make them look and feel like an Esri application. So if you need a form with all kinds of different inputs or you need a shell to put your application in, Calcite provides that for you. Um, it also provides things like the combo box we saw, which is how I'm enabling that sort of drop-down selection of a state. And if you look at any of this in the documentation, it's actually really great here. You get an example of exactly how you would configure this. So what we want to do, though, is turn this form that doesn't have any location aware capabilities in it and start to suggest an address. And the easiest way to do that is to leverage REST.js. Um, this is a lightweight collection of JavaScript modules that Esri offers. And these make it really easy if all your app needs to do is call a location service and do something with the response. So for example, for geocoding, if all I need to do is search for an address, I'll come down here and show the example and then we'll see it in my application next. I reference two modules. One is for the authentication and the other is for the geocoding. And all I have to submit is the address and a little bit of information about what I want to retrieve back from the service, as well as my token. And this makes it super simple to work with these location services in applications you're building, or if you had another system that needed to call these. So if we come back to the form, in my form that has the suggest API, whoops, I can still make errors. I now get the type ahead suggestions, and what we're doing is auto-completing the form based on the response that comes back from the service. Behind the scenes, uh, like I mentioned, this is an application that is using Calcite, so let's look at the completed one here. Uh, I'm using Calcite to make it really easy for me to build this form, because I don't want to know everything about how to style my inputs and make sure it only receives text information. I can use things like the uh, Calcite text input, um, and also I get, advantage, get to take advantage of things like lists that I can insert data into. So those suggestions are getting put into this Calcite list every time the user strikes the, uh, any key. So if we come in here, and I'll scroll down to that here. Here we have the authentication to REST.js. And then we're having a listener here. And this is something to know about the Calcite components is that they provide their own events that you can listen to. And they're specific to what that component is designed to do. So this event that I'm listening to is gonna fire every time any key stroke happens on that text input. Um, and the value I get back is that string that the user has. And then in order to populate that list of suggestions, all I have to do is call the suggest module from REST.js pass in that user input and my API key and tell the service how many suggestions do I want. Do I want one, five, 50? 50 might be kind of a lot for someone to actually meaningfully use. And then when I get that response back, I create a new Calcite list item for every response that I received. You'll also see a reference to that key I mentioned. So the value that I'm storing with each of these inputs is that magic key. And that's how when the user is hitting enter or selecting the address that matches, 
we're actually going to pass that magic key to the geocoding service so that we can get the exact thing that they were searching for. And this is a really powerful way of capturing better data in a business system that you might have. Like this example here might be kind of silly because it's a form that's not connected to anything and it's sort of arbitrary. But one way we see a lot of this being used is with other business systems that your organization may have. So your CRM, your asset management system, your work order system. When someone's trying to capture that data initially, it can be a real pain to go back after the fact and try and clean all of that up. And using some of these core location services when you're capturing that data initially enables you to have better data from the start. So this is uh, the first example that we wanted to show. Um, we'll move on here. And let me gracefully transition back to PowerPoint. The next couple of demonstrations we're gonna show are gonna use two new services. Um, they're not new to Esri, but they're new to what we've talked about so far. Um, the first service that we're gonna start incorporating here is the routing and direction service. So just like you can do with ArcGIS Online, through ArcGIS Platform, you can do point-to-point -point routing, you can do uh, multiple vehicles, optimized routing, you can generate service areas around locations. Maybe you're trying to understand uh, the reasonable territory that someone can reach from a depot. Um, you can identify closest facilities, do origin destination, destination matrices. So we really give you this ability to really get a lot of information out of the routing service while also allowing you to define things like what type of vehicle is it, what time of day is the travel occurring, some of those optimizations you're familiar with if you've worked with the routing service before. That includes other things like barriers, points, lines, polygons that might be in the way. We're also gonna start showing some examples using the Places API. Um, this one's really, really fun to work with. Uh, it includes 50 million points of interest globally. Uh, they're organized into a thousand different categories, which is a, a really big number. Um, but it's really powerful also. That means that you can search for things very broadly, which we'll see in a second, or very narrowly. You can search for transportation, or you can just look for parking. There's dozens of attributes about each of these points of interest. And really, what I would encourage you to think about, much like the enrichment service can provide context, the places service can give you context to what someone is seeing on the map. So we're gonna show um, two demos back to back here and we'll talk about how we built them. Uh, this first one that I will show is a trip planning application. Uh, it's going to use CalSight and REST.js again. You'll see a search bar that looks suspiciously like the one that we just saw in the previous demo. Um, but it also is gonna to start to use the ArcGIS Maps SDK for JavaScript to display that data, as well as make the query to the places service. And this application is built using React as well. So we'll come back to my browser here. So here's my trip planning application. When I first load up here, we're just looking at the United States. Uh, but I'm gonna to start to add stops. And the first one I'm gonna add is the Palm Springs, whoops, Palm Springs Convention Center. Now in this case, when I'm selecting one of these suggestions, I'm making two different calls here. First, I get the address that it matched to, but I'm also querying the places service to get other potential matches that are nearby. So maybe I didn't put in an exact thing I was looking for, but I'm looking for something near something else. Um, in this case, I'll just select the address that I matched to. Now the map received that stop. We got it both in this itinerary on the left as well as on the map. I'll add a new stop here. So we'll search for the convention center again. Uh, but this time I wanna see some lodging nearby. So as I change the filters, and this is um, another CalSite element of group of chips that we can listen for changes on, this is controlling those category filters. So now I can see some lodging nearby. Um, I'll go ahead and select the hill. And what we should see here is that location gets added and we're gonna solve that route again. Uh, but maybe I want to um, stop somewhere in between. So I'll just look again for, uh, let's look for entertainment or I need something to do maybe before I go back to my hotel. So this should display some of that information. Oh, there we go, I wasn't patient enough for the Wi-Fi. Um, we'll add dining and drinking here. 
And so I'll go ahead and add, I think I saw this one on the map because I had the um, places base map service on here as well. So this is just an example application that is working with the routing service, it's working with the places API, and this is built on top of React because there's some changes that are happening. I'm adding and managing stops that are in a list, and I need both the itinerary on the left-hand side and the map on the right-hand side to react to those changes. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the places service in some more detail and how I'm solving this route, and then we'll dive in and look at the, some of the components themselves. For the places service, um, I definitely recommend, if you're interested in this, taking a good look at the documentation. Um, there are a lot of things to sort of start to get familiar with, but one of the really important things to know is that when you're interacting with the places service, there are really 50 million points of interest there. And that means that familiarizing yourself with some of these categories and how to make queries that whittle that down a bit so that it's meaningful if you're gonna interact with the data to your end user is a really good place to start. Like I mentioned, there are high level categories like arts and entertainment. So you could say my category is 1,000 or it's 1, 000, or 10,000 and 11,000, right? Or you can look for specific kinds of things. Like maybe instead of all of the arts and entertainment, I wanna look for amusement parks, casinos, and stadiums because that's the kind of application I'm building. Um, and this is really important, again, for understanding how to start to whittle down this huge repository of information into something meaningful. Once you have a sense for what you're looking for, there are a few different ways that you can query the places service and get that list of places. Now, on the map, I do have the places sort of as part of the base map, but I can also search for them near a point. So I can say I have an X and a Y location and I wanna look for everything within 1,000 meters of that, or I can look within an extent. What this is gonna give me back is a list of all of the places, and you define how many you want, um, their ID, and some basic information. If you want to get even more of that context, you can then make a second request for that place to get things like the drop-off location, the front door, what census block is it in, what's the neighborhood, uh, what's the phone number, email, fax, um, what are their opening or operating hours? What's their social media link? Actually, if we look back here, and I'll go ahead and add a new stop. We have the websites linked in here. So if I'm looking at this and I wanna drill deeper in, I can open up the website for the place that I'm looking at. So the places service um, is definitely one where there, there is some familiarization with some of these categories that's important as you're getting started. Um, once I have a list of stops though, I also want to provide that routing from one to the other. And that's something that we've made fairly straightforward in the JavaScript SDK. And we'll see this in more detail in just a moment. But we have uh, what we call a route layer. And this basically provides everything you need. It's your one-stop shop for solving a route. It allows you to add an array of stops. You can specify some information about them, some metadata about when, curb approach, and then you just ask it to solve that, and it updates the map and displays that to you. This definitely takes the sort of effort of working with the routing service to solve something as simple like a route and really makes it an approachable thing to use. So I'll just come in here and quickly look at two of the components there. So again, this is a React application, and one of the components I wanna talk about is where we're actually making the request for the places data. Um, so this one is displaying search results, and it's looking for updates to either the searched address or the category filters. Whenever the, one of those two um, state variables is changing, we're gonna use, call this function called update place results. It's gonna take the search address and it's first gonna make a request for uh, all of the points of interest that are near that location that the user searched for. Once we have those, we're gonna go and make a second request to get that additional level of detail that's populating the information, like the website, the hours, the phone number in that card. Now, because we're in React, we're using an effect hook to make that call, and this allows us to update that list of place results anytime either the searched address or the category filters are changing. 
and then we're using Calcite to create a nice, simple card that fills that information for each of the results. Tripmap is uh, what is actually taking that list of, or that array of stops and solving the route and displaying it. Here we're bringing in some of the modules from the JavaScript SDK. And one of the things that I want to mention that is important to the way this is working in React is that in order to both add the route layer to the map and update it when the data is changing, we're memoizing the route layer. So we're creating it outside of the effect hooks that where the map and the updates are happening so that we can reference it both times. And like I said, it is straightforward, though it is going to look a little bit complicated to solve that route. Whenever the stops change, if I have more than one stop in that array, I do two things really quickly. I create a new array that has a formal stop in the JavaScript SDK for each of the stops in the array. And then using the route layer makes everything after that simple. I load the data in, and I call the solve method. And it's that simple. That's what's updating the route every time the user's input is changing. So if I add a new stop here, it's that route layer that's making it easy to update and solve the route. I got ambitious there with my last uh, demo. Um, but so that was uh, one example of using, the, of using React as well as Calcite, the places service, and our routing service. Um, for another example, I'm going to send it back to Courtney. OK, cool. Thank you, Russell. All right, so for my first uh, use case demo, I will be showing a grocery delivery demo app. And for this, I've used Calcite components and ArcGIS uh, REST.js, just like in Russell's other use cases. Um, the mapping library, though, that I've chosen for this application is uh, MapLibre GLJS, which is one of our open source libraries that we actually do offer documentation for on our website. So let me open that up. So within our doc, you can learn uh, how to easily integrate uh, ArcGIS location services into your MapLibre GLJS app. And this is through ArcGIS RustJS. So you, know, you can go through here and just see all the, it's formatted pretty much the same way as our like, JavaScript SDK uh, documentation. Um, it's just, you know, most of this, again, is based off of ArcGIS RustJS. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. Was it not switched? It wasn't switched. It wasn't switched. OK, well, anyway, here's the map lever GLJS documentation. <laughs> and it does look like the JavaScript SDK. Yeah, OK. All right, didn't miss too much. Let's get to the demo. Here we go. OK, so <laughs> um, here I have centered my map on Palm Springs. And like in Russell's last demo, it is using the ArcGIS uh, routing service. But in this demo, I'm going to use uh, some of the more advanced routing functionalities. So um, the idea behind this Fresh Wheel Groceries app is bringing like efficiency and smart decision making to your grocery deliveries. So do bear with me because the Wi-Fi is very slow. So let's hope this works. But I'm going to, um, the first thing I'm going to do is add a location. I'm just going to go with the, let's just go with the airport here. OK, so once I've entered this in, which by the way, it was using the geocoding service there and the suggest to give that, I'm going to go ahead and click add an order. And there we go. That wasn't too, too slow. It added it to the south facility um, box there. So what it's done is it's used the closest facility routing function to do that. It automatically picked the nearest distribution center for that order. Okay. And that's done using, let's take a look at just like a little chunk of that code here. That's done using the closest facility function, like I said, from ArcGIS RestJS. Um, the incidents are the uh, orders that are coming in, the grocery delivery orders. The facilities are your distribution centers. Um, the, this parameter here is set to true because it's showing the actual route. Uh, and then, of course, my authentication or my API key. Okay. So the next uh, part of this functionality, and you can already you know, visually see it, is the actual route itself. And what I will explain a bit more here is that it's actually using the optimized routing uh, option here. So that really, all it does, the difference between 
uh, simple and optimized routing uh, is it will actually reorder the, the um, like different stops in the proper order to actually make it into the most optimized timed route. Um, and yeah, in order to do that, you basically just have to set the, fet, the find best sequence parameter set to true. So it's pretty much very similar to uh, solving a simple route. Again, um, this is also using ArcGIS RESTJS, and this is the solve route function. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last routing functionality that I want to show here is the service areas. Now, uh, when I click on one of these, uh, basically what happens is that green area is anything drivable within that facility. So for this one, I clicked on the north one and that, that red dot up there. Uh, anything drivable within a five minute range and then the orange one is anything drivable within a 10 minute range. And that is done using like breaks is what it's called. Uh, and I'll show a little bit of code for that as well. So within here, we've used the service area um, function of ArcGIS RESTJS, uh, and I've set my facilities, which is my distribution center. Uh, and then, yeah, pretty much it just goes from there. It will draw your polygon uh, and fill in the color here. And these, we put in the breaks here. Uh, the zero and the five are actually means from zero to five, and then it means from five to 10, so, okay. Yeah, so um, that is a look at, this really was mostly like a routing demo, essentially. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next part of our demonstrations here. So this, let's go back to our slides. Here we go, perfect, okay. So this is one of my favorite topics with our location services, our base maps. Um, it's the foundation of every map, right? So the, we have several different, like styled by professional cartographers, you know, maps to choose from. We've got ArcGIS maps, we've got OSM base maps. So there's you know, dozens to choose from. Um, some of the more common ones, you've got like navigation or community. Uh, and most recently we actually did add in like base map places, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, one thing I do want to also mention in the space of base maps is you can, you can customize your own base map using the vector tile style editor. And so I have actually done that within the application that I'm going to show uh, here in a minute. And essentially what I did was uh, chose a company's like colors and kind of styled it to that. So, you know, it just gives a little bit of customization. All right, let's go back to the slides. The other location service is data hosting, okay. So in the app that I'm about to show, I've also used a feature layer, layer that I've hosted. Um, and I was able to actually just bring that into my developer dashboard. I just created a, quick little file of, you know, in Excel, just saved it really quickly um, and threw it in there. Uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. So um, you just go to the Layers tab and you click Add Your Layer. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be in the next demo as well. And I guess a couple of important things to point out, like hosting your data is like storing a flat file in the cloud. You can store your uh, files in our infrastructure and then the services are then created from there. So, and this really lets you visualize and edit and analyze your, your content, right? So I will be querying the content in different ways uh, in my application. Okay. All right. So in this real estate demo, um, I've built this using the ArcGIS Maps SDK for JavaScript and CalSite components. So the tech stack here is a part of some of the demos we've already shown. Let's go ahead and open that up. Here we go. Okay. One second. There we go. All right. Okay. So in this app, I call this Skyline Realty. Uh, 
company or whatever. It's a fake property. It's, these are all completely fake, but this is centered on Palm Springs. And these properties have been populated with a hosted feature layer. Now at the top, I have some buttons for filtering by like the number of baths or beds, and I can also sort. And these are done um, using SQL queries. And let's see, I believe I have the code for that, but I don't think I switched it to the right screen. Let's bring that up. Yeah, here we go, okay. That's my spatial query. Um, Oh, no, I don't have it up. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and go on to the next topic. I apologize. The next thing, so those were done using SQL queries, uh, but the spatial query that I have here uh, is pretty cool. So I'm able to say drag and then really just kind of show where the intersection of that uh, spatial query is and find my uh, properties from there. So that is the code that I was showing here in a, a second ago. Okay, so. The apply spatial filter, it, the function itself, filters a map layer to show only the properties that intersect within that specific area, right? So first what happens here is I've created the uh, query based on the provided geometry. Um, and then I find all the condos that are within the area by checking the ones that intersect with it. So I, and then finally, I really just display these on the map and additionally here, you can see that the maps view ensures that only the filtered properties are shown. So it's a bit about that code there. Okay. All right, and the final feature I wanna show from this application is I did throw in a bit of routing here as well, just for fun. And if you click on a property here, that over there is the directions widget that is loading. Uh, I'll go ahead and show the code, all the, oh, there we go, it's coming up. Okay, so this is the code for that. Um, it is using the directions widget from the JavaScript SDK. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, yeah, pretty, pretty easy to use, you know, very minimal code to bring it right into your application. And I'm able to, really what I've done is I've just had it start at the route that I, or start at the property that I clicked and I can route to wherever I want to from that property. Okay. All right, so I think I'm gonna move on to the last demo here. Yeah, okay. All right, so for the last demonstration that we're going to show, uh, I'm, I'm excited about this one because this is a little something that I threw together kind of you know, in the last few weeks uh, playing around with some things. So the um, first thing I want to talk about is base map places. This is going to be a part of the app that I'm showing. So places are a part of the vector base map. Um, and just so you do know, the places do come, uh, they do come in with like, embedded with a place ID already. So that allows you to then, you know, if you want more functionality, you can then bring in the place of service and click on it and it uses that place ID to then get more details about it. So uh, you have the three options here of like, you know, showing no places, showing cartographic base map places, um, or showing the attributed places. So attributed meaning, well, they contain attributes to them. All right, and then what I've also done in this application is I've brought in demographics data, which Russell was explaining earlier a bit about that. You can you know, look for the different kinds of cats or different um, households that have a certain number of cats or, or whatever it may be. So that, that one's kind of fun. Um, with this uh, application that I'm about to show, I did use just the global data facts for it. Okay. Now. Here's to hoping the Wi-Fi helps me out right now, because it was working a minute ago. Okay, so with this React Native demo, let me explain a little bit about the tech stack that I use for this first. So I use um, MapLibreGL SDK for React Native. Um, I used ArcGIS uh, REST APIs, and of course, just the React Native library. So let me show the React Native MapLibre SDK real quick. Okay, so essentially what I did is I was able to use this library because 
our base map styles do actually follow with the map box style specification. So it made it pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, I'll get into a little bit of the details of that. Let's open up the app here. Okay. There it is, okay. I'm gonna focus mostly on the code, but all right. Okay, so now this, I wanna call this demo more of like a bonus because it doesn't necessarily pertain to a specific use case, hence why I've kind of just called it the React Native demo. Um, now, uh, in this application, the first thing I want to show is I can choose between different base map styles. And I went ahead and chose just some of the more common ones that we have. So currently, it's on community. I can switch to streets or navigation. Um, or I'll click on places in a second. I can click on the places and it will use the ArcGIS navigation base map with the places then embedded within it. Uh, and the code for that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I've just had to use the base map style specifications and just kind of switching them with this function that I made. Uh, let me go ahead and click on places. Now when I do click on places, it's going to zoom in because, well, to see the places in the base map places, you do have to be zoomed into eh, a zoom level of like 16, 17 usually. Okay, now the functionality for this, I did make it to where now we can click on a place and, well, see the place ID. So, now one thing I will say, React Native applications, if you're familiar with React Native, they do not have a DOM themselves. So you're not actually able to work with the base map itself like you would with a normal React application or a normal MapLibre application. So I had to do a little bit of tinkering with this uh, to actually get it to work. So I've used, as you can see here, um, I'll expand this out. As you can see here, I've used the near point, I can zoom in a bit too, the near point operation uh, for the places API. And basically what I've done is I've just queried where I'm located on the map and just found that closest place to it. So I wasn't actually able to use the place ID to get the details, if that makes sense, but it still kind of works. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. If I click on a place, oh, I do have to check the show places. I made it work that way. Okay, well, Wi-Fi, there it is, yay. <laughs> There's the place detail. So we've got, you know, Mexican restaurant, um, and it does show the place ID since it actually does have that within the um, places API call itself, but that did not come from the base map places. It came from the places service. Okay, um, so the other thing I wanna show, let me close that portion of this, is I've added two other things to this application. I've added search functionality. Again, that's just really with a geocoding uh, service. So that's just a basic call here. Let me zoom to, I don't know, let's go to Seattle, why not? There it goes. Cool. All right, so I can you know, search for locations there. Uh, I could have embedded the suggest function if I wanted to, I just, I just didn't. Um, and the last thing I wanna show in this app is the ability to show demographics information. Okay, and again, that's using the geo enrichment service, so there's that REST API URL for you. Okay. Click here. Now I did zoom out a bit because when I click, I have it to where it's within a one mile radius of the clicked point. You are seeing all of those different statistics. Um, and in order to do that one mile radius graphic there, it, was, it took a little bit of trigonometry, I won't lie. Um, so, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the functionality of this application. You know, you can see where this one was, again, kind of fun, just putting little pieces together. And, um, you know, you could put together your own actual more advanced use case for something like this. So. All right. So we are going to wrap it up here. I'll do a little bit of summary. 
All right, so today we you know, navigated through the capabilities of ArcGIS platform, really showcasing its role in powering location-aware applications. And through the demos that we did, we've seen everything that ArcGIS platform offers, you know, with all the different libraries and SDKs, like everything we were able to kind of put together and show these cool different applications that you can build, you know. Um, yeah, from trip planning to grocery delivery, all this kind of cool stuff. And we, you know, we encourage you to uh, look into all of these different, you know, services and SDKs and everything that we showed today. Uh, I don't believe that we've provided the code yet, but we will definitely do that very soon. We did not put a link to that in our slides, but we certainly can do that personally if you'd like, or we will make sure that it gets loaded within the, um, what is it called? The, when, the, when they release the slides later on, which is in like a month or so. Proceedings. Cool. That's the word. That's the word. <laughs> All right. So if you could please um, share your feedback in the app. Uh, yeah, we do very much appreciate it. It helps us get better with every presentation that we do. And also, if you could connect on social with us, uh, I try to definitely help out with our Esri devs, Esri dev events, uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, we do live streams uh, on YouTube, so that's always fun. We actually do that with the JavaScript SDK team uh, once every release, so that's about once every four months or so. Um, and then the developer experience team, which I'm a part of, we also do live streams as well. So those are fun ways to you know, get to kind of you know, interact virtually with the teams. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, I think. Okay. All right, so questions. Let's go ahead and do that. How do you want to handle that? Yeah, so I think we have um, plenty of time for some questions. We have a uh, mic that we can pass around, or we could try just repeating the question back, since Maybe there's only, only two of us up here. We don't have someone, unless someone wants to volunteer to run with the mic, but um, we'd love to hear any questions that you all uh, might have. Definitely. Yes. Uh, on that optimized routing API call you made, where you said you wanted to find the best route for, let's say, there's 10 stops for the grocery <laughs> sure about the charge itself like in terms of yeah so the so the question yeah, was yeah. Um, when you make the toggle from the uh, to sort of get the optimized route rather than the um, like a simple route maybe um, no, that's weird. it hasn't quite updated yet so the short answer is uh, I would say the best place if you're sort of wondering about how the pricing of Oh, I know what's happening here. I'm still in presenter mode. There we go. Okay. Um, so I would say the best place, if you have questions about how pricing works in ArcGIS platform when you're using the platform location services, this is one of the really powerful things is if you just go to developers.arcgis.com, um, it gives you sort of information about, um, for one, how much of these services can you use without incurring any cost, right? Like this is really useful if like this comes up a lot when we're talking to developers. Like, how do I get started? How do I create my trial account? The, the great answer is you just get started. And these services include sort of like a free tier that you can work with as you're um, developing. Um, but this does have information if you, if I sort of scroll down here through each of the services, including sort of what the difference between a standard and an optimized route looks like. Um, to the specific question you have about what that what that toggle enables, I'm, I'm not sure I know the answer to that, but higher level questions about how the pricing for different services work, that's all um, here on the developer site. Yeah, I will add that when you, if you're using an API key, you do have to actually scope it to do specifically optimized routing. So that is like a separate thing um, to be able to set. All of the more advanced routing functions actually require that. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the things you can also do here for any of your keys that you do create in scope is you can always look at, so I've been working with 
um, the routing service, right? And I can see exactly the number of transactions that are occurring. Um, we're really trying to give you a lot of information uh, as a developer into what the current state of all your usage looks like across these services. Yeah, good question. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes. The place of data. Uh, is that coming from community maps? How often is that updated? Do you have an idea about that? You can answer. So the question is um, about the source of the places data and how frequent the updates are. Um, that is a very good question. Uh, places. I know the, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Well, I know the source. Yeah, yeah it's Foursquare, mm -hmm. right? Um, the so we do source it from Foursquare. The uh, data itself, um, as far as updates go, I mean, I don't know if you either you or I know that level of detail. You know, that's kind of yeah. No, I don't know how many how frequently yeah. the updates are, um, but we could. Is there an answer to that question oh. in the? Yeah. So. So the answer to that was it's a quarterly update currently, and we'll look to do more frequent updates if we can. Exactly. Many of the services in ArcGIS platform update once a quarter at least, so geocoding service, for example. Yeah? Another pricey question, sorry. <laughs> um, when you turn on the suggestions when you're doing the geocoding, yeah. Great question. The suggestions service is not metered, so yeah, it's a it's a really great thing. Um, if you've used other services, it's not the same from other providers out there. But we don't meter. It's a, it enables you to use the geocoding service, right? So you can start providing a suggested address on the first keystroke. You don't have to try and do it like every third or every you know no calculus about when it's time to show the suggested address and optimize your costs or anything like that. It's like one of the hidden gems, I think, of our geocoding service. So, yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions from the left side of the room? It's been really dominated <laughs> by the right, the right side here. <laughs> and if anyone has questions that they want to bring up to us yeah. after, we'll, we'll be hanging on here for another couple of minutes. So um, if there aren't any other questions in the room, uh, definitely thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you.